Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In my presentation this morning, I will be providing you an overview of ABARE's outlook for the main meat commodities. In doing so, I will spend most time on beef and sheep meat, but I will also be touching on the outlook for poultry and pig meat. First, I would like to turn to the outlook for beef, starting with the outlook for the average soya price. The nominal average soya price for beef cattle is forecast to increase by 2% this year, reflecting continued restock of demand for young cattle and low turnoff. Next year, soya prices are expected to remain relatively strong before trending down in real terms out to the end of the uh, projection period. Prices are projected to fall in response to increased supply of cattle and lower returns on average for exporters. Now I will discuss in a little more detail the main supply side factors affecting this outlook. For some time now, we've been writing about herd rebuilding in our quarterly commodity outlooks for beef. The last two seasons have been very good uh, for pasture growth and allowing producers to carry more stock. The ABS has estimated that beef cattle numbers rose by 9% last year to just over 26 million head. Given favourable seasonal conditions, Australia's beef cattle herd is projected to expand to just over 29 million head over the next two years, which would make it the largest herd for nearly 30 years. After this, herd numbers are expected to decline gradually as slaughter increases. In the short term, as herd, being, herd rebuilding continues, slaughter is forecast to remain at around 8 million head, which is lower than the average recorded over the past 10 years. Over the medium term, cattle slaughter is projected to increase as herd rebuilding abates and in response to growing demand in export markets. With these expected levels of slaughter, a high and a high proportion of adult males in the turnoff lifting average carcass weights. Beef production is forecast to increase by 1% this year and a further 2% next year. Over the medium term, production growth is expected to be slowed somewhat by an increase in the proportion of females in the slaughter. This pattern of production is consistent with the abatement of herd rebuilding and produces turning off surplus breeding stock. As many of you would know, on the demand side, nearly two thirds of Australian beef production is exported. As such, export markets are important drivers of the beef industry. The volume of beef exports is forecast to increase by 2% next year and be mainly responsible for a similar increase in beef export earnings. Over the medium term, Australian beef exports are projected to increase moderately to just over 1 million tonnes. Perhaps a more interesting export story is the changing composition of export destinations for Australian beef. Ten years ago, just over 80% of Australian beef exports found their way to the United States Japan and the Republic of Korea. This share later rose to 92%, but by the end of this year is expected to have fallen to around 68%. Over the outlook period, there are no signs that this change is likely to be reversed with the performance of our exports in these three markets forecast to be mixed. In Japan, Australian beef is expected uh, in Japan, demand for Australian beef is expected to fall as a result of stationary per person beef consumption and increasing competition from US beef. In the Republic of Korea, growing beef consumption and reduced domestic supplies because of an outbreak of foot and mouth disease in 2011 are expected to increase Korean demand for beef imports from Australia in 2011-12. 
However, these are expected to decline over the remainder of the projection period. On a brighter note, the low su lower supply of domestic beef available to US consumers is expected to drive a small recovery in US beef imports. However, Australia does face increased competition in that market from Canada and low cost producers from Latin America, particularly Mexico and Brazil. By the end of the outlook period, the share of Australian beef exports going to these three markets is projected to fall slightly to around 65%. Before moving on to sheep meat, I just wanted to touch on live cattle exports, which are forecast to fall by 31% this financial year. This fall is largely due to Indonesia's intention to reduce live cattle imports significantly in 2012. Now we'll move on to the outlook for lamb and sheep prices in Australia. The nominal average salary price for lambs is forecast to increase marginally next year, reflecting demand from producers rebuilding flocks and also from exporters. Although the supply of lambs is projected to increase over the projection period, the average salary price is forecast to remain favourable in real terms despite being projected to fall. In the case of sheep, the nominal average salary price is forecast to increase by 3% next year. This follows from an expected fall in the supply of sheep as producers retain breeding ewes for flock expansion and weathers for wool production. Over the medium term, sheep prices are expected to remain favourable with strong demand from export markets expected to balance the effects of a projected, projected increase in sheep turnoff. We now take a, look, take a look at the supply side influence on this outlook in a little more detail. After several years of decline, the Australian sheep flock is forecast to increase over the next few years and reach 85 million head by the end of the outlook period. Favourable returns are expected to drive the expansion, albeit at a slowing rate. Over the outlook period, the slaughter of lambs and adult sheep is forecast to increase and support higher sheep meat production. Lamb production is expected to be boosted by an increasing supply of lambs and strong demand in export markets. Production is also expected to be boosted by a greater focus by many producers on improving genetics and finishing lambs on grain, which is expected to lead to higher average carcass weights. Mutton production is expected to increase sharply early in the projection period, following the turnoff of older ewes held in previous seasons to increase lamb numbers. Production is also expected to be boosted by very good pasture conditions, contributing to higher average carcass weights. On the demand side, while a gradual increase in per capita lamb consumption has been forecast for Australia, most growth is expected to come from export markets. The volume of Australian lamb exports is forecast to increase by 11% next year and coupled with favourable export prices, is expected to increase the value of Australian lamb exports by 21%. Over the medium term, the volume of lamb exports is projected to continue its upward trend. The real value of lamb exports is projected to increase over the next two years before easing over the remainder of the outlook period as an expected increase in supply puts downward pressure on prices. Export volumes to established markets are projected to rise, particularly the United States. At the same time, demand in developing markets such as China and parts of the Middle East is pro projected to strengthen as a result of growing incomes. Turning now to mutton exports, where the volume is is forecast to increase by 20% next year and translate into a 25% increase in value. 
The strong growth in value also reflects an expectation of higher unit returns stemming from strong demand in the Middle East and China. At the end of the outlook period, mutton exports are projected to reach 140,000 tonnes with a projected value of $645 million. Now I just want to touch on live sheep exports, which after falling to their lowest level on record this year, are forecast to increase by 36% next year to around 3 million head. Over the remainder of the outlook period, live sheep exports are projected to increase as the pace of flock rebuilding eases and the supply of sheep increases. By the end of the outlook period, these exports are projected to reach almost 4 million head, but still well below the 20-year average to 2010-11 of around 5 million head. We'll now move on to poultry and pig meat. Australian poultry production is forecast to increase by 2% next year to just over 1 million tonnes. The expected increase in production is largely a response to consumer demand. Over the medium term, production is projected to increase by around 2% a year. Productivity in the Australian poultry industry has improved significantly over the past decade, where improved genetics has helped improve fertility, feed conversion rates and average carcass weights. In the 10 years to 2010-11, average chicken slaughter weights increased by 19%. This improvement is likely to continue over the outlook period. In the case of Australian pig meat, production is forecast to increase by 1% next year. Over the medium term, pig meat production is projected to increase gradually to 370,000 tonnes, partly as a result of lower feed grain costs and increased demand for pig meat. These forecast increases in production combined with the flow-on effects of increased use of imports in the process sector, are expected to result in real pig meat uh, prices declining. Consequently, the weighted average price of pigs is forecast to fall by 2% next year. Over the remainder of the outlook period, the price is projected to fall to around 265 cents a kilogram. In summary, ABARES is forecasting that the sale yard price of beef cattle will decline in real terms, continuing a longer term trend. However, production and exports are projected to rise. While the sale yard price of lambs and sheep are also projected to fall in real terms over the outlook period, prices are expected to remain at historically favourable levels. At the same time, production and exports are projected to increase. Lastly, production of both poultry and pig meat are projected to increase over the outlook period. Thank you.